I recently made a video of my top add-ons in Home Assistant. In that video, I asked y'all if you wanted me to make a video on the Hacks add-ons that I use as well. Hacks, the Home Assistant community store, is a very important tool for your Home Assistant setup because it provides a lot of community add-ons that you can use in your, in your environment. So hit, this is that video where I'm gonna talk about my top 10 add-ons, and there are five in my integration section and five in the front end section, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So let's get started. Before we get started, let's talk a few minutes about what Hacks actually is. Hacks is the Home Assistant Community Store. It is a UI that allows you to manage a lot of the custom uh, add-ons that you can put into Home Assistant that are made by the community. Now, Hacks is not the Home Assistant Community or the Home Assistant add-on store. This is completely different. And this is the official add-on store that's in Home Assistant. Hacks allows you to add a whole bunch of other things that are not available in the main add-on store for Home Assistant. Hacks is super easy to install in Home Assistant. You just basically go in here and you add the integration through Home Assistant just like you would any other integration. You do actually need a GitHub account to uh, use Hacks. And in the FAQs, when they talk about this, you can actually see why do I need a uh, GitHub account let me see what we have here. It says it uses the GitHub API to gather information about all the available and downloaded uh, repositories. The API is rate limited to 60 requests every hour for unauthenticated requests. So Hacks needs to make authenticated requests. That's why you need an account. Otherwise, you wouldn't have enough. Um, if everyone used Hacks at once, it would just basically stop running because it would hit that API limit. Uh, so that's why you need that. So you notice here you've got integrations and front end. Hacks has both of those. Um, integrations are things that are integrate with Home Assistant. Front end is typically things that are display or visual kind of things. And so I have five of each that I'm going to talk about today. By far the most important initial one is the Hacks uh, integration. And this integration allows Hacks to interact with Home Assistant. Without this, nothing is going to work. And I've talked about what Hacks is already. I won't go into a lot of detail about it. But if you were to tell me, ask me what my number one integration for Hacks is, it's going to be this one right here. Because without it, nothing else works. Next up is Alarmo. Now, Alarmo is an alarm system integration for Home Assistant. It provides a user interface for setting up your own alarm system completely from the browser. It has a ton of features. So it's fully compatible with Home Assistant and the alarm panel card has an integrated panel for complete management via UI so that you don't have to do anything with YAML. Don't have to make any restarts when you're making your changes. Can set up to four ARM modes. This one actually comes with Armed Away, Armed Home, Armed Night, and Armed Custom Bypass. Each has its own delays and security perimeters that you can set up. Supports configuring your existing HA entities as security sensors. So basically you build your whole alarm system off of Alarmo with stuff that's already integrated in Home Assistant. All of your door sensors, window sensors, whatever you have, if you already got it, you can use it. And Alarmo will pick up a lot of those. When it says it will be watched automatically, it adds those sensors to its list of sensors. You can add or remove sensors to Alarmo as well if you need to. You can set up multiple users with individual pin codes, which I do. It restores the state after a restart of HA, which is amazing. You don't want it to disarm itself if HA were to restart for some reason. Uh, you can receive push not notifications uh, and it splits your house into different areas. So you can actually set different areas separately. Uh, this is where my alarm stuff is set. I can do uh, just basic information here. I can set up sensors, so all of my different sensors that I use are here, and then you can add more sensors, remove sensors, uh, codes, you can set codes, and then any actions that you have, you can send notifications uh, to different things. Uh, I have different stuff that goes off for notifications, and then if, a, if an action happens, and I have a lot of automations that deal with the alarm, but you can actually do specific things like set the inside lights to on when triggered. Um, you can run this, I mean, you can set all kinds of stuff. You can create your own actions with this as well. So it's very, very customizable. So that is number, what is it, number two on my integrations for hacks that I use on a regular basis, uh, one of my top five. All right, so number three on my list is Uptime Kuma. And I use this as an integration. This is not the Uptime Kuma add-on that actually does the uh, 
the monitoring. That's this right here. This is Uptime Kuma that I use, and it monitors all of my internal infrastructure, my home lab stuff, everything else. And this is an integration that I use that allows me to display alerts on my Home Assistant dashboards. So right now we can see that um, the DNS here is actually, well, it's went from pending to down. Anytime anything shows up um, as a pending or down service, one of the monitoring services in Uptime Kuma, it then shows up on my dashboard right here. And this is a conditional card. So if nothing is down or pending or has an issue, then this goes away uh, in this section up here. It gives me a quick visual indication that there's something wrong with one of my uh, services or systems within my home lab or my home network. And so I like this a lot because I make it an alert overnight for something non-critical and I'll forget about it. I come look at the dashboard and here it is, my reminder that I need to go take care of some sort of issue with one of my systems. So this is number three. Um, it does provide two sensors for each uptime Kuma monitor. And these are all monitors here. So every one of these things is something that I'm monitoring within my network. And I get a binary sensor for either on or off and a sensor state, the state of the uptime Kuma monitor. And you saw there it showed uh, from pending, which was a state to down, which was another state. So I use that to keep up with uh, all the alerts here and tell me if something is down or up within my network at a visual glance. Next up, we have Frigate. Frigate is the Hacks in Home Assistant integration. It allows Frigate to talk to Home Assistant. It provides rich media browser with thumbnails and navigation, sensor entities, so you get the camera, FPS detection process, all of this stuff here, binary sensor entities, uh, camera entities, switch entities, and support for multiple Frigate instances should be should you be running most of those. And if you want to know what Frigate is, by the way, it's a complete and local NVR designed for Home Assistant with AI object detection. Uh, it uses OpenCV and TensorFlow to perform the detection locally for IP cameras. Um, and so you can run this within Home Assistant as well. Uh, I run it externally, but I still use the integration. And here's an example of what you get with Home Assistant in the media browser part of it. I also can key off the sensor entities and I can provide um, the updates or the sensor entities to automations and allow me to get alerts and determine what's going on with my Frigate system. So a very important tool to use with Home Assistant and my Frigate NVR and all of my cameras around the house. The final hacks integration that I'll talk about is actually a two for one. It is the NWS weather alerts and it is the blitzertongue.org lightning detector. So the NWS alerts allows me to get alerts from the US National Weather Service. I actually display it on my dashboard here. Uh, currently I have no alerts, but if there's this alert number were to be above zero, it would turn red and it would be a visual indication that I have an alert. Now you can actually click on these things and under the attributes, you can get the information on what the alert or alerts are. So I can get a quick glance of what kind of alerts are coming up and then it keeps me aware of that. Now I will caution you that if you're using this, don't use this as your sole method for getting alerts for severe weather or life-threatening emergencies. This is a backup and a nice to have because this is, you know, if you lose connection to the API or something or you don't get alert timely enough, uh, then don't rely on this, but it is a nice to have, and it does keep me updated. It works pretty much all the time. Uh, but my phone gets alerts, uh, a lot of times quicker than it will here because this pulls the API every minute or so. So that's that one you'll see next to it. I also have this, which is my lightning counter. That is the blitzer tongue lightning detector. And this is a worldwide real time community, um, collaborative lightning location network. Uh, it uses the Blitzer, Blitzer Tongue data and provides real-time notifications about lightning strikes in a given area. Uh, and the way I have it set up today is I actually have it set up for 30, uh, 15 miles, so a 15-mile radius around my house and a time lapse or time, time range of 30 minutes. So any, any lightning strikes that I get in a... Uh, 15 mile radius within 30 minutes will tick the counter up. So what I do with this is I set automations in addition to displaying this, by the way, if this gets uh, any more than one, 
or more than zero, then th this turns yellow as a visual indication. Uh, but if I um, am away from the, the dashboards and I still want to know when lightning's happening, I have two alerts. One is a lightning alert that basically tells me that anytime the lightning count is above three, so if I get three lightning strikes within 30 minutes, within 15 mile radius, then I get an alert that says there's lightning in the area. And then if there's a high strike count, I want to know anything above 251 strikes. That's an arbitrary number. I thought it was 250. I don't know why it's 251. But if there are any strikes um, greater than 251 in that time frame, that means that there are there's a lot of activity. And generally in my area, if there is a lot of lightning activity, then there's some severe weather in the area and I wanna know about that. Lightning strikes are a good indicator of potentially severe weather and I wanna know about that. So this has been a rock solid uh, integration uh, and it has alerted me many times to lightning, even when I didn't realize there was a storm coming. You can set these things to whatever you want uh, in terms of time and range. The default, I think it says is 100 kilometers uh, of the home. That's pretty far out. I don't need to know things that are that far out. So that is uh, the, the final of my integration. And so what I'm going to jump on to now is actually talk about some front end stuff. Now, front end stuff, like I said, is usually more visual and it's not so much uh, something that makes things tick it just makes things prettier now to get to the front end you just click on front end and then here you have all your front end stuff i'm going to jump right into the button card that's the a number one most configurable card that i've found in home assistant here's some examples of what uh, you can do with it different color cards different styles uh, different entity or different uh, icons based on the state of it Tons of features here. Uh, works with toggable entry, six available actions, state, state display. You can even set your the card color based on the RGB value of a light. Um, custom state definition with customizable color, etc. Tons of options. I mean, just tons and tons of options here. Uh, you can even change the size. You can change the way it's nested. Uh, if you really want to get into serious dashboard design, you can go through all of this and do a lot of things with this. And it gives you a lot of information on how to do that. These are example of some of those cards. Everything's green right now because everything is currently closed or locked. If I were to unlock one of these locks, you would see that the color changes to red and that's a visual indication to me that that particular item is not in a normal state or a secure state. And so you can use it for that. So I use, a, use it here. I use it in a few other places in my dashboard, but is a super handy, super fun and configurable way to set up dashboards and get it just exactly the way you want it to look. All right, so let's talk about the big number card. That is the next card or next front end thing that I wanna talk about. All right, so this is a simple card to display big numbers or numbers for sensors. It supports severity levels as well as background or severity levels as a background. And again, there's a lot of options you can set on this one. By far, not as many as you can set uh, in the button card. I use those here for a few places. This is my uh, big number card with a vertical orientation. It looks at the temperature, um, the feel like temperature, humidity, and it changes the fill in the background uh, in addition to the color of that. So if this gets up to a uh, 70 or 80 or 90, it'll change to yellow, change to red. And then this is a vertical version of that same card. And when you see the fill here, this is basically set on a min max value for the configuration. And this allows me to uh, see this visually on a horizontal scale. So these are my the power output of my sub panel, uh, the attic, and then of course my truck voltage currently at 11.98 volts on the battery. So I use the big number card for displaying things like this where I want to get a quick even if I can't see the number, a quick visual representation of the state of an entity based on the numeric value of that entity. All right, so third is Atomic Calendar Revive. We do a lot of things in our house uh, these days, and we need to keep up with it on a calendar. This is a great tool for uh, getting into a CalDev or linking to a CalDev calendar, uh, and it allows you to do event list modes, calendar view modes, uh, and show those on a dashboard. So if I look at the documentation here, you can see some examples um, of those two. Event list mode is this right here. And here is the calendar mode right here. It allows you to set a lot of options 
so you can do uh, things like event lists, love lists, UI support, keyword block and allow lists. You can hide your finish events, your progress bars, which you can see on here. So if you have an all day event, you can see how far along it's going, etc. Lots of different options for this. I display it on my dashboards um, to keep up with what is going on in the house. It's really handy to have. Uh, so if I add something to my Google Calendar, it automatically shows up in the Calendar Revive on my dashboards. All right, so that is number three on the list. Number four is back to the weather stuff. We'll talk about the weather card. The weather card is just a nicer looking um, UI. There is a built-in weather card in Home Assistant, but I like this one because it has the option to display the details here, such as sunrise, sunset, uh, humidity, pressure, stuff like that. And I also can, um, it's also animated, so it's kind of a nicer looking card. This is another nice to have, and I do display that on my dashboard over here. You can see that this is the weather card right here, and it has the sunrise, sunset, and then it has the forecast for the rest of the week. So I can get a quick glance at what is going to be coming. Uh, you can see the animation here for some rain. You can see the sun spinning a little bit there. So it, it just touches it up a little bit in the weather department. Finally, let's talk about the mushroom card. Uh, integration. Now, Mushroom is something that came out, I think the the developer of the Mushroom uh, cards actually now works for uh, Nabucasa and develops for Home Assistant. But this is basically just a bunch of cards that are available for making things easier to build. And their, their thing is to say that the goal of Mushroom is not to provide custom card for deep customization. You use the minimalist or button card for that. It is a uh, mission to propose an easy to use component to build your home assistant dashboard. And so these are all the cards you can use with this um, alarm, cover, entity, fan, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can also do some theme customization if you want to do that. I built my entire mobile dashboard or my mobile, yeah, my mobile dashboard that's displayed on my phone out of this, with the, with the exception of this one uh, alarm card. I think when I originally built this, there was not an alarm card, but all of these are mushroom cards. These are chips. Uh, so they display things very tiny and compact. And then these are all mushroom cards that are available in that mushroom uh, add-on for home or for from hacks. So that's it. That's the top uh, 10 hacks add-ons slash integration slash front end that I use in Home Assistant. There are hundreds and hundreds of these things available. They they keep popping up every every week or every day or every, I mean, just all the time. So jump into Hacks if you haven't got it installed. Go see what you can do with it. A lot of times there are devices that aren't integrated to Home Assistant natively that can be integrated with Hacks. Just remember it's custom. So yeah, I use it your own risk, although I've never really had any major issues with it. So um, don't be scared. Uh, just have fun with it. And if something doesn't work right, uninstall it, turn it off, and move on with life. All right, if you made it to the end of this very long video, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. Hit me up on Discord. If you are a subscriber, no, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Feed the algorithm. It helps the uh, channel grow and helps me make more of these videos. And with that, we'll see you on the next one.